is this is day four of the Wyoming budget session, all right? So there's a lot of a lot of <laughs> politicking going on. I'm just I'm just picking up the vibes here of all that now, political I have a joy. That when you leave, because I've been following you on Twitter and I've been taking some of your tweets and posting them back up on Facebook and even on my webpage on occasion if I thought you had an interesting one. I have a feeling now that you're out of the room during a budget session that these guys are up to some kind of a shenanigan. So what have they been up to while you've been watching? Oh, man, well, today, just the last few hours, Glenn, have been pretty uh, pretty exciting. Uh, well, however you want to define it, uh, there was a, uh, a bill, as you know, the big controversy remains following the uh, Hill versus Wyoming decision, uh, the overturning of last year's bill, SF-104. Now we kind of have to uh, clarify because now we have a new SF-104 because there's now enough Senate bills to constitute that number. But uh, that, of course, was the bill that stripped Superintendent Hill of most of her powers and uh, gave it to an appointed position. That law was overturned just a few weeks ago by the Wyoming Supreme Court as unconstitutional, and the legislature, uh, in many, many different ways and forms, is trying to pick up the pieces from that. Uh, but uh, one of the things was the idea of having a special session uh, to actually not address the education issue here during the, the budget session, but to actually have a special session. I believe it would be uh, later this spring to come together and talk all things education. Um, there seemed to be a lot of uh, resistance to that in this morning. The bill that would have allowed for that was Senate File 106, and it actually failed in the Senate this morning by about one vote. Um, now, over the lunchtime, uh, there was some talk among leadership and some uh, members of the Senate, and they just, in the last probably about half hour, voted to reconsider Senate File 106, and now it has passed uh, for introduction into, uh, to the Senate uh, by, uh, I believe it was t 21 votes. So they managed to get some people uh, across the line there to get the two-thirds uh, threshold. So that continues. Also, Senate Joint Resolution 2 failed introduction. That would have been a, a put the question before the people uh, to actually have a constitutional amendment that would have uh, eliminated the superintendent position entirely. So all sorts of things going on, Glenn, but that one is... Uh, I mean, obviously, the most dramatic to have the Senate, which is usually not as uh, considered as conservative as the House, to go in and not introduce this bill, and then for leadership to have to go and uh, do some uh, leading, I guess, whatever you want to call it, and uh, get this thing brought back up. And uh, so we go from there. This is only introduction. That doesn't mean the, the law is passed. It still has to go through committee. It still has to be read three times in the Senate, and it still has to get through the House. So... Isn't it interesting, it's Senate File 106, I mean, that was close, it could have been 104, and I wonder, who did they drag into the back room to sort of rough up to get that past to where it is right now? But one quick thing on that, and we got a lot of other issues to cover, I am under the impression from what I'm hearing way up here in Gillette, that the governor and some of the representatives are doing all they can to uh, stall or make, you know, anything they can to keep Cindy Hill from getting her old office back. I think that's a fairly a fair assessment. Uh, it was it was it yesterday the uh, Attorney General did officially file for rehearing. It was February 12th, my birthday, incidentally, but they uh, went ahead and used the last day to file for a rehearing at the Wyoming Supreme Court. Um, I, I think it's as good a read as any, Glenn. I don't, you know, try and dig into the hearts of men and women here to figure out what their true intent is, but it's very, uh, the actions do speak pretty loudly that they really uh, do not want to have Cindy Hill reinstalled at the Department of Ed before the November election. I'm talking to Steve Klein from Wyoming Liberty Group, who's given us an update on what's happening down in, uh, in Cheyenne now that, uh, that, now that the legislator is in session. Oh, by the way, on birthdays, happy birthday, Steve, and... What I do, if I, I, from now on in my life, whenever I have a bad year, I just call do over. <laughs> and so that way you don't have to age as quickly, just so you know. So, okay, what else are they tossing around down there that we need to, because it's been happening kind of fast, and your tweets, I bet, have not been keeping up. Oh, yeah. it's. I mean, this is a budget session. This is uh, the first week is very, very intense because by Friday afternoon, by Friday tomorrow, uh, all bills that are going to be considered have to be introduced in their first house. And there's something, I mean, you're looking at 179 House bills, huge number, uh, a little over 100 Senate bills that made the LSO deadline, so they have an assigned number. So they're going to continue. Uh, at a mar I think the next two days in the House especially are just going to be marathon pace. Uh, I've been pretty uh, happy with some of the bills that are coming out, That you, you know, because 
A lot of bills, they survive introduction. It takes a two-thirds vote just to get a bill considered during a budget session. So I'm happy with that. I mean, usually when a bill has that threshold, it means that people, there's general support. You actually have to lose votes because then when the bill is actually voted on for its substance, then you, you have to, like, lose a, um, a, a certain number there to, to, and you'll still have a majority. So I'm really happy about uh, the work I've done here at Y Liberty getting attention in actual law here. Uh, the big one for me is civil forfeiture. There are two bills, House Bill 76 and then uh, another one, House Bill uh, 107, that would both address a lot of the problems in Wyoming civil forfeiture laws. One of them is a, a pretty easy fix to the law we have to, to fix some of the problems. The other one, uh, brought by Representative Gingrey, is a, a big, comprehensive elimination of civil forfeiture in Wyoming and replacing it with a criminal forfeiture system. So two bills there, they'll be considered probably next week in the Judiciary Committee at the same time and we'll uh, see where that goes. Um, another big one is a bill that has been introduced in both the Senate and the House. I believe it's the exact same bill, so reconciling it should be pretty easy unless there's some amendments. But this is a fun bill brought on the House side by Representative Dave Miller that would uh, prioritize and fund uh, actions by the Wyoming Attorney General against the Environmental Protection Agency. So, and I believe it would use federal funds to do it, which is kind of awesome. That's the beauty of it, right there. Yeah, that has actually made national news. By the way, I have that on several pages on on my bold Republic website. So we're making national news here that we'll be using federal funds to go after the EPA, which is sweet justice, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a bill I'm going to be following pretty closely. Uh, House Bill 115 got introduced this morning. This is the second year uh, this bill has been up. Last year it actually passed the House unanimously, 59 to, to nothing there, and they uh, with one excused. And then uh, they, uh, so that bill is back, but last year it wasn't able to uh, make it to the Senate floor before deadline. So this year we're bringing it back again. It's been introduced, and this would allow for the securing of rights of way over federal land, uh, that existed over not before 1976. Uh, this is especially important up there, your neck of the woods, uh, Glenn. I've, when I came and spoke on this topic, uh, uh, I was last year about this time. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this, and I was met some people there who had, had already had BLM uh, coming in and closing roads that they'd been using to access coal mines, to access all sorts of state land, recreational trails. So apparently this is a very live issue and securing those rights of way is a big deal and this would allow counties, it would give them a process to go about doing that. Um, you know, the now feds don't like to admit that it. Again? What I'm sorry, that's House Bill, again? House Bill 115. 115. Oh, yeah, that is important for people up here, so I'll make sure to pay attention to that one. Okay, go on. Yeah. Uh, so those are the big ones uh, for me. I'm going to keep following. I mean, you have uh, one bill uh, just in the last hour. It did uh, not survive introduction by about one vote, and that was actually a, a, a large repeal of gun-free school zones brought by Representative Yagi. Okay. The idea there was to allow anyone who has a concealed weapons permit in Wyoming to carry on campus. There is still a bill that did uh, was introduced, uh, sponsored by Representative Eklund. That how, that's House Bill 111 that does allow for uh, school districts, district by district, to determine whether they want teachers and the like to be able to arm themselves. So okay, we were just passed. It failed. House Bill 119, okay. the one that the gun owners really liked. It is interesting in some of the things this morning. I was testifying against uh, Katie's law, which is a law that would allow for the collection of DNA from anyone arrested for a, a certain felonies in Wyoming. I have a real a lot of problems with this bill as far as due process, as far as uh, uh, big brother concerns with having a big giant DNA database made up of people who never were convicted of a crime necessarily but for were just arrested for one. Um, but it was interesting to note that one of the big concerns with that was the, the fiscal note that uh, they seem to assume that there's going to be federal money to uh, pay for this program, and they said, well, what if there isn't? We don't have a fiscal note on this bill. So legislators really do pay attention to that, but as far as the bigger issues in the budget, I mean, I know Maureen has been blogging on it pretty uh, extensively, and you can check all that out at yliberty.org. Which, by the way, I want to put in a plug for you real quick. You, again, are, and I've mentioned several times here during this little talk we're having, you are on Twitter, and you are on the floor and in different committees tweeting what's going on there. Where can people find you on Twitter to keep up? Oh, boy. Well, we'll spell that one out. Uh, you can uh, check out uh, Steve R. Klein. That's uh, S-T-E-V-E-R, 
and uh, K L E I N, and that's my uh, Twitter handle there. Uh, we have a Y Liberty group on there as well, and of course, I mean, uh, you know, Glenn, you're at Bold Republic there, and uh, you mm -hmm. give us a nice retweet. People can just follow that line. There. Yeah, and and that's what I've been doing. I've been sort of retweeting some of what you were doing. Let's get back to the Katie's Law thing for just a moment. There's a couple of bills besides Katie's Law. Amy Edmonds is also following another one, which to me, I, mean, I know we're not talking DNA. But again, it's a data collection bill. So, uh, and I wonder about federal funds coming toward the data collection on students in school at the same time. So, do you think either of one of those at this point stand a chance of getting through? I mean, wh where are they at? Well, House Bill 97, uh, Tom Reader's bill on education administration that does involve uh, restrictions on data collection, was introduced yesterday. Um, you know, this is going to be, uh, you know, Amy will tell you, this is a, that was, that was an uphill battle. It's going to continue to be an uphill battle. Uh, it does have the, I think, large support on the education committee, but I mean, you have this ongoing uh, big fight over Common Core, you know, and that's what 97 uh, largely deals with. So I think it's, uh, you know, and even, even on the, you know, that there's a lot of, even within the, the, the people who are opposed to Common Core, there's a lot of strategic uh, divergence right now and uh, I can tell you right now I think it's pretty clear when the when the teachers union mobilizes they're going to be united so it's right. it's going to be a, a pretty tough uh, tough few weeks here on House Bill 97 no doubt. Okay. I do want to focus because it is big news up here as well the EPA bill that you were talking about just a moment ago I want to pay some bills and then let's come back with that but also let me touch on real quick so apparently Wyoming Liberty Group is seeing a little bit of victory here dealing with the city of Cheyenne. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we won unequivocally. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't know. No, actually you're given carte blanche. You're allowed like a reporter. You're allowed to walk in and out of whatever you want, correct? Oh yeah, and 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 it's citizens, you know, throughout Wyoming, you know, at, throughout this session if you have a chance to come down, you know, because the budget session is really tight, the schedules, you know, I think I think after this week things are going to calm down a little bit. You'll be able to know a few days in advance, at least when committees are hearing certain bills. But, you know, time is really tight. Uh, you really, so uh, it helps to have the experience, you know, it helps to have this prestigious lobbyist badge. I mean, I'm going to tell you, isn't that, isn't that cute, Glenn? Yeah. It's really yeah. Nice. But, uh, no, that I mean. And uh, about a buck fifty will get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. There you go. There yeah. you go. I think, I think it's about three bucks there. Three bucks. Know, is it that high? Badge. Been a while since I've been here. Okay, right. so let's get back. I'm intrigued as to how this will work, so if you can break it down a little bit for us. So the e and, and this EPA bill that's up right now in front of the legislator, is it in part due to what's happening over in Riverton, Wyoming? Is that what this is about? You know, Representative Miller uh, has brought this bill before, so it, the and obviously, the EPA development has been going on for, for years now, but it didn't really boil over into the news until within the last year. So I take him at his word there. And the EPA is, this is really about the regulatory actions, not just in the Wind River, but you know, as a whole. Um, and I can tell you, you, know, you look at the Supreme Court over the last few years, there have been some, some excellent uh, victories against the EPA, but they've been very limited. They're, they're really years and years of litigation just to get the basics. I think the one of the, the worst cases that, you know, was, it was called Sackett versus EPA and it was a victory and it was, it was great and it took, but it took years to get to the Supreme Court after a, a family was building a home out there on the, near the west coast and the uh, EPA decided to uh, say that they were building on a wetland and they were, even though they were far away from what any one normal person would consider a wetland, and they started fining them uh, up to a certain amount of today if they didn't repair the damage they'd already done by building their home, you know, damage. Um, and they tried to challenge the ruling that the EPA had made, and the EPA insisted there's no, you can't go to court and challenge this, you have to go through this administrative rigmarole, and the Supreme Court struck that down. So it took years just to give these people the right to go to court. Now they're finally back in court getting their day there, but, I mean, it's funny when you have to go to court just to assert your right to be there. So the, the EPA has, you know, most of the work I do is litigating against a small federal agency called the Federal Election Commission, which is about 350 people, and they have some very hardworking lawyers who want nothing better than to capture your political speech in their regulatory red tape. 
But you can imagine the EPA is a much larger agency, thousands upon thousands of people, hundreds of lawyers working full time to prevent you from building your home, preventing, you know, basically stopping all progress. So, and, and I think in Wyoming, it's not just Representative Miller, but a lot of us are really sick of it because environmental quality can be far better determined by us here in Wyoming than it can by a bunch of paper pushers over back in D.C. So you, you really need to open up and start telling us what you really think, there, Steve. You know? No, I and I'm. I, I think it's. No, it's I think a you're really good, Bill. Right. It's really, it's really good that we're now shifting and putting up yep. because the bill that has been proposed would modify some pre-existing law that uses federal funds for a lot of different things and throws in some legislative findings about the the uh, malfeasance of the EPA, and then it it does two big things. First of all, it funds the actions of the Attorney General to start taking, you know, anytime the EPA makes a ruling that's adverse to the state of Wyoming or to Wyoming property owners, the AG that will have the authority and the funding to go ahead and pursue those actions, uh, suing the federal government in that capacity. And then it goes a step farther and actually prioritizes that under existing law. It says this is now one of your big uh, priorities, uh, the Attorney General's office, to go do this, to go take actions like this. So I think it, it not only reflects the EPA's uh, taking uh, liberties with the Environmental Protection Act, but it also uh, reflects then the uh, that the uh, AG is going to be fighting these as a top priority. So it's good. How, it's a very good move. How did they get the part in there about grabbing federal funds to pay for our own Attorney General? How does that work? Well, this is uh, uh, again the pre-existing law, uh, which is the. Um, I wish I had the name in front of me, but this is a. Um, the pre-existing law used to use federal funds to allow help help communities actually comply with the law to go to workshops and things like that and it had pre-existing stuff that the AG you know could step in but it wasn't a priority uh, for protecting Wyoming property owners and protecting Wyoming towns and things like that so now this really is is upping the ante there and you know it's possible the feds will will push back on that front but if nothing else we're certainly sending a clear message and there's been in the last year you know so many messages sent to us by DC you know the uh, just after the last legislative se session they threatened our our severance payments that were supposed to come back mm -hmm. to us more recently they uh, threatened our pilt payments or payments in lieu of taxation that we're supposed to receive because the federal government you know no one's paying taxes on the, right. all that federal land that the uh, the federal government still holds so we get money for that but then they were threatening to cut that off too now they haven't actually done that those those payments have been restored but they're messing with us they really are playing political games with their obligations so at the very least sending the message that oh well what you do send us we're going to use to fight back against you uh, reneging on your obligations I think it's a very strong message and I think it's a great idea. <laughs> well, out of time, I, I'm going to watch this one closely because I would like to see some of these lawsuits go through. And we got to have you back to have more of a conversation because I got some more questions here. Steve Klein, Wyoming Liberty Group. Thanks for coming on, Steve. Thanks a lot, Glenn.